I will now show you how to get 128 gigabytes to work on the Sony PSP. Now as you can see I have 71 gigabytes free space. Now I'm going to show you first of all it's actually working. There's a uh, no disc inserted and the game I'm going to be playing right here so you know I legally own it. Let's see. Game. Now formatted, this came to actually about 108 gigabytes, really. Square Enix. And as you can see, it's actually just as fast as anything else. Games and movies lit up just fine. It could take a few moments sometimes to, you know, load up your selection of titles, but for the most part everything's fine. So, for example, one of my uh, videos Anyway, so to show you that how it's actually working now, now that you know that it actually does work, all right, I'm going to turn this off and open it up and show you the card. Now, you have to be very careful when you do this method or you could lose all of your games. And it also has a trick to actually getting it to work to begin with. This is a smart dual reader for micro SD. You put a micro SD card here and here, and then you put this into your PSP. Now, this has been done before with uh, 232 gigabytes I've seen, but uh, in this one I'm using two 64 gigabyte micro SD cards. Now, here's where the challenge comes in. These come pre-formatted, and if you put these together onto a card and try to format it, it'll actually only see 64 gigabytes if each card is properly formatted to begin with. The trick is to essentially corrupt the format when you first set it up. You don't want to format each card separately to FAT32. You want to do them all as one single card. Now, if you have that problem where your computer is only seeing 64 gigabytes on this setup, you want to put this into your PSP and attempt to format it will not be able to successfully do it, it'll fail. But in failing, it'll actually destroy the previous format and allow your computer to properly format it to 120 gigabytes and see everything it needs to see. A second thing to worry about is this has to act as a single unit. If you take these cards out and swap them or put them into a computer to view them, separately from each other, you will damage, probably destroy, any information on it because these two cards are together acting as a single format. That is where this is really risky. You also do not want to take this out or put this back in while your PSP is on. Um, I had no problems doing it, but there's always a risk of causing some kind of damage they're a little bit more delicate, but otherwise play just as well as anything else. So you see I unplugged it, put it back in. Turning it back on. Come on. Mm. Oh wait, that's right. And battery card slipped. I didn't put that in right. Hold on. Okay. Ah, 
One second. I tried this with my hand. And it boots up just fine. Doesn't take long to turn back on. And everything works. So I have 71 gigabytes free out of 108 usable gigabytes on a 120 gigabyte card for the Sony PSP. Um, it has to be formatted FAT 32. Um, and I have no reason to believe that it wouldn't also work when 120 gigabyte micro SD cards are available which means that the next time the new SD cards come out, you can possibly get up to 256 gigabytes, no problem. Now, um, like I said, this can be tricky to set up, but it's not impossible, and it's really simple. Each micro SD card costs me $55. The uh, actual dual reader on Amazon, like $3, $4. So we're talking about $115-ish with shipping for 120 gigabyte card on the Sony PSP, which is a bit pricey since you can get 120 gigabytes for about 60-ish bucks as a full SD card, but uh, you can't get that to work with the um, Sony PSP. So right now, this is your best option to get you know, full usage. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching.